Everything you need for today's service can all be found in the description area of our stream below. We really want to encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel, C4 Church Hawaii, and make sure that your notifications are turned on. That way you'll be up to date and notified anytime we start service, anytime we upload our latest sermon, and anytime we upload our new videos. All of us here at C4 are so excited that you're joining us today, and we can't wait to worship with you.
You're the peace in all distress. You're the light that breaks the darkness. You're the mighty one, the risen sun. You're the savior to the drowning. I was lost till you found me. You broke the chains that had bound me. You're the mighty one, the risen sun. You're the the reason we have breath in our lungs. We just give him all the love and adoration. There was a moment when the lights went out And death had claimed his victory darkest day in history. You see them? They're on a cross they made the sinners. Wherever curses blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could For the earth began to shake And the veil was stolen What sacrifice was made As the heavens Savior of 
to the King. All hail, King. We have the Savior of the world. The Savior of the world. Mm. All hail, King Jesus. We lift him up. Come on. And all We get to gather together this morning to lift up the name of Jesus, our King Jesus. And this morning we have the honor and the privilege of doing something together as a family. We're going to be taking the Lord's Supper together. We're going to be taking communion together. So you can go ahead and grab your elements that the host team passed out as you walked in through our doors. And as you just kind of get it ready... We don't do this just for tradition or ritual sake. There is power in taking the Lord's Supper together because it reminds us of who our God is, what he has done, what he continues to do, and what he promises to do until the end. And so I just wanted to read a song that was anchored in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. As I've been taking communion just personally, it's been really ministering to my soul. And you might be here today and you're in a season where you can definitely recognize God's grace upon your life. You have like the clarity to see that God is good. His promises remain faithful and true today. And there might be some of us here this morning where it's like, man, I can't even, I can't even think of that. The circumstances that I'm walking through, I, I'm... I can't get past my fear. I can't shake the anxiety. I can't shake this depression. I'm just so frustrated. As we take communion together, my prayer is that we would be reminded again of who Jesus is. And there's a bridge in this song, and it brought me to tears. It was so simple, but so profound. And so if you want to read more about communion, you can do so in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But it says, you've been so, so good to me. You've been so, so good to me. 
Oh, to think where I would be if not for you, if not for you. So today when we take the bread, we take the bread of life who was broken for all of our sin, his body crucified to make you and I whole again. So when we eat of the bread or in our case, the wafer, would we do it in remembrance of Jesus? You could go ahead and peel that layer back, break the wafer and let's take the bread together. And then you can go ahead and take your cup. And this morning, we will recall the cup poured out in sacrifice to trade this sinner's end for his new covenant. And so when we take the cup together this morning, would we do it in remembrance of Jesus? You could go ahead and take the cup. And if you're able to, I know that we're trying to figure out what to do with our cup. But if you could grab a hand of the person standing next to you. And I'm going to ask that you, we would do a prayer together corporately, together as a family. So you're just going to repeat after me. Would you say this? Jesus... You have been so, so good to me. Jesus, you have been so, so good to me. Oh, to think where I would be if not for you. We receive your love. We acknowledge your sacrifice. We celebrate your resurrection. You receive the glory today. You are worthy of my praise. In Jesus' name. And God's people shouted a big amen. Amen. And let's just sing this together. Let's sing this together. Every part. Every part of my. Take this life and breathe it on this heart that is now yours. We give him all, and you can have it all. Lord. Every part of my world. So take. Amen, amen. That's the cry of our hearts this morning, that Jesus would have it all. Amen, amen. At this time, we're going to release the keiki. You can go ahead and find your aunties and uncles in the back wearing a lime green lanyard. They'll take you over to the other side. For those of you in here, greet the beautiful people around you. Those of you online, we're glad that you've joined us this morning. We're going to get started in just a little bit.
Aloha and welcome to our weekend worship service. All of us here at C4 are so stoked you're joining us to worship here today. Our purpose here is to help you and I to pursue the freedom to be all that God has created you to be. If this is your first time joining us and you want to learn more, visit our website, c4.church, and that's where you'll find everything from upcoming events to how to give and opportunities to connect beyond the Sunday service. On the homepage, you'll see a button that says connect with us. You just click that, enter your information, and someone from our connect team, that might be me, will reach out and connect with you. You can also scan this QR code right here and it will take you to our connect form. If you're here with us in person, there's a physical connect card right in the seat pocket in front of you. And once you complete it, you can drop it in the tithe bucket or the brown box is mounted on the wall in the back. Or you can give it to one of our connect team members wearing a connect lanyard. You can also get involved and connected beyond our weekend service. There's a lot of opportunities and events happening in and around our church. So go ahead, visit our website, click on the events tab to see all of our events on our calendar. And lastly, listen, we believe in building a culture that celebrates what God is doing and testifying of his goodness. We believe that the testimony of one can impact many. And if you'd like to share your story, big or small, email us at testimony at c4.church or talk with one of our pastors. Listen, thanks for joining us today for our worship experience. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Hey, good morning, 8 a.m. service. Pastor Chad has such a gift for sharing the word of God, but also making QR codes appear out of just nowhere. And uh, we actually just want to, if it's Pastor Chad, if you are watching and your wife Emily is watching, we want to celebrate with them 10 years of marriage. They're on a trip getting some time away. And so if you'd continue to pray and bless them. But we want to welcome you to C4 Christ Center Community Church. Our vision as a church is to be a dream-releasing church with a global impact. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, my name is Brett. I have the honor of serving as our church's innovations and youth pastor. And we just wanted to share a couple of things before we dive into the word of God. Uh, the first one, I wanted to invite our family ministry director, uh, Dean Connoisseur. Our team has been working on something very exciting that we wanted to present to you. So would you welcome Dean? Come on. Hey, if you were here last week or you heard Creighton's message about taking steps to get activated into your purpose. Okay, awesome. Um, one of us was. Um, no, if you, it, it's really inspiring, um, but it also brings up a lot of questions like, what are my practical next steps to, to do that? And so we've been working all last year on creating uh, what we call the growth matrix. This is our discipleship and leadership development program. Um, for those of you who consider C4, your family, your ohana, where you're going to grow. And what the matrix does is it breaks success and walking in our calling into practical steps these four major categories um, of success, organizational leadership, uh, biblical discipleship for yourself, for others, um, as well as spiritual authority, intimacy with the Lord, and relationship and emotional health. And you can see even around you that many people in life, leaders, organizations, even ministries, they may be rocking one or two of these categories, finding success, but are low in other areas. And there are a lot of people, even within the church, that are being exposed for that. The enemy eventually takes um, leverage in those lower areas in our life. And even after decades of ministry, we can lose it and not end well if we're not focusing and growing in all four of these areas. So that is what we've put together. Creighton, TJ, Kean, Auntie Renee, Chad, myself, and others who have walked with people for decades. We've put this together to help you do exactly what Creighton was preaching last week. So the way that you begin this, everybody goes through our introductory workshop. It's called Enter the Matrix. It's an eight-week interactive workshop. It starts, I think, two weeks from now. Um, all the information, you can scan this QR code. Please do. There's a video there and information how you can register. There's a small fee because you get a workbook as well as a powerful prophetic training manual that you need to grow as well. Okay, so if you have any questions, 
Please take a look. There's limited space. We're doing a smaller group this time. We did our first run last year. Um, this is going to be our last in-person run of this program, and then it's going to be only on video after that. So if you are someone who needs to grow and you're looking for a practical next step, prayerfully consider this to be that step for you, okay? If you have any questions, come find me after. Bless you. Thank you, Dean. And I just got a live update from Pastor Kean. Uh, there's only like 50 spots left. And so you better jump on it quick, bust out your phone, scan this QR code. If you are paying attention to football games, this is also your last chance to check your score while pretending to take a QR score. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. But we're going we're gonna to continue our time of worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And so the buckets are going to make its way through. Um, family, uh, Pastor Kean did mention last week as well, uh, we were in this freedom culture campaign, really sowing into what God um, is calling us to invest into next year. And so we just also want to thank you again. We were able to raise just under $220,000 going into these um, events just like this. And so, yes, thank you for your generosity. I mean, raising $220,000 is a big deal. So thank you, Dean, for acknowledging that. Yes, thank you, Jesus. But I'm going to pray for our tithes and offerings this morning. If you would just go ahead and bow your hearts. Jesus, we thank you that you are a provider. God, we thank you that you're faithful. And God, as we give today, we want to give you and honor you with our very best. Lord, we pray that everything that is given will be multiplied to make the person in the name of Jesus famous. We're not here to build a castle. We're here to build your kingdom. And so, Lord, we say thank you for the privilege of doing that and partnering with you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said? Amen, amen. amen. Couple more things. Uh, the first one is this. We started our 2024 21-day fast last week. Actually, Monday. Monday, Mon Monday was the first day. I was fasting before then, so I'm losing track of my days. I'm kidding. I didn't. But, th yeah, I was, that was for bonus spiritual points. But, yes, we started Monday. I want to encourage you. It's not too late to join. Uh, we're seeking the Lord together as a community. Uh, we want more of his grace. We want more of his power. But more than anything, we want to know the person of Jesus more intimately. And one of the ways we get to do that on a practical level is through fasting together. So if you want to jump in, um, there's a lot of resource for you, how to get started, even recipes. Go ahead and visit our website, c4.church backslash fast. And the last thing I have for us today is our women's Bible study. They're gearing up for their first session of the new year starting next week um, with this study called Soul Care. Everyone say Soul Care. And um, for all the women in the house, um, I'm sure you can relate to living a life that's hustle and bustle. Busy, busy, busy from work to the kids to family, all of the things. And so what would happen if we actually began to slow down and walk and live at the pace of Jesus? And so you get to gather with other women in the community to discuss that, grow through that together. Um, if you have any questions or you want to register, scan the QR code, or you can reach out to women at c4.church. They'll have their team answer anything that you have. And so um, this morning, we get to dive into the Word of God. Um, we have the honor of having Dr. Ed Silvoso share with us this morning. And uh, I, I, I've been in a couple of sessions with him, and the one biggest takeaway, you've probably heard me say when we say the Word of God, put some Tabasco or some Sriracha on it. This is the Tabasco King. He is here. He is here. He is here. So would you do me um, a great honor of welcoming Dr. Ed Silvoso? Hey, we're just going to pray real quick um, before we get started. I just wanted to read from Ephesians 6. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. And listen, um, Dr. Ed was just sharing with a few of us last night, especially for him, was very tough. I want you to just understand for a second, and you need to zoom out of yourself. We cast demons out of ourselves, but we wrestle with principalities. And oftentimes when our brother, when he goes into places or into cities, he's seeing not just the people, us, that he's here to encourage, but the warfare that is going beyond us that you are called to impact. And sometimes he senses that, sometimes he wrestles with that. So can you extend your hand real quick to this man who is sacrificing and fighting? Um, his wife, uh, Ruth, is here with us too. Father, we just believe, God, that, and we put on the full armor of God. 
God, we stand with our brother, Lord. We thank you for everything you're doing through his life to invest into Hawaii. We open our hearts, God, so that we can be encouraged. God, the armor of God can come on and we can go out with this um, inspiration and impartation, God, to break down what the enemy is doing in our family, in the workplace, in schools, all around us in our neighborhoods, in our communities, God. We thank you and we choose victory in overcoming right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Some of you, those of you that never heard me, let me tell you, there is nothing wrong with your hearing. It's my accent. Okay? And Ruth and I are from Argentina. And when you learn English later in life, it comes out like this. So what you do, treat it like a difficult to catch radio broadcast. For you millennials, it was a time when radio have a dial. <laughs> dial it in. We are delighted to be with you. We have had almost a week with Pastor Creighton, Pastor King, the staff. We brought a leader from all over, and this has been a wonderful time and a world-changing time. I have a word for this congregation. Our pastor who led in prayer for me made reference to principalities fighting against us. Actually, last night, I had all night long uh, opposing a principality over this region, and particularly over C4. <clears throat> and the challenge is not that you are not doing well. The challenge is, and I think it has to do with Pastor Creighton's message, that there is much more, and the devil wants to keep you away from it. So, because the light that shines the farthest, we're going to be talking about changing the world, has to shine the brightest at home. I'm going to invite my wife to join us. This is Ruth Palau, my wife. And for her to pray a prayer of blessing upon your home, upon your family, I want you to think specifically about family members that are not walking with God. We are praying for something to happen in the spirit realm. So would you stand up one more time and Ruth will lead us in prayer. Father, thank you for your presence here in this place. We can feel the Holy Spirit moving already. Lord, open our eyes, our ears to hear what you have for us today. Thank you, Lord. Bless each one of each person here that they will be blessed, Lord. We pray for their sphere of influence, Lord, beginning with their homes, with their family, that it's so important because the ecclesia begins in the home. So we pray for every couple represented here, more intimacy, more uh, with the children, Lord, that they will be coming to you, Lord, the ones that are not walking with you. We bring them in, Lord, the children, the grandchildren, that the whole family will serve you, Lord. Amen. Me and my family yes. will serve the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we impart blessings Amen. on everybody here, and we put a hedge of protection and we pray your kingdom to come, your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give a big hand to the Lord and sit down. Folks, I want to share with you the faith that God has in you. When I was here last time, I shared about prayer evangelism, changing the spiritual climate blessing, fellowship, and ministry to the people in your neighborhood, in your sphere of influence. And I show you a slide with four levels, you know, people that barely make it and people that are changing the world. The vision that God has given to your leaders, and particularly to Pastor Creighton and Pastor King, is that you will be a light to the nations. The question is, do you have enough faith? And that's what the devil gets in the picture. You don't have enough faith. And then we treat faith like a credit card or cash. And we say, well, I have faith for this much, but I don't have faith to change the world. I don't have faith to uh, win my family for Christ. And I want to correct that because when it comes to faith, it doesn't matter how much faith 
you have in God. What really matters is how much faith God has in you. Amen. God is a God that has tremendous faith in you. Look, he's telling you, not just Pastor Creighton, not just Pastor King, not just me. He's telling you, ask me, and I will give you nations. Amen. I mean, look what he's saying. And then when we go to the Lord Jesus, you can see the scriptures there. Go and disciple, not one, but all the nations. You say, well, Ed, that was rhetorical. No, no, no. Fast forward to the last chapter, in the, I mean, to the last book. Nations shall be saved. Hawaii shall be saved. And the eyes of the Lord are on you today. And I'm here to open the scriptures and to take authority over every stronghold that is holding you back so that what your pastors are challenging you, you will rise up to it. You say, well, Ed, but I still don't have enough faith. Well, in my book, Transformation, I tell a story from my childhood. Every summer, I spent my summer with my grandpa at his ranch. It was a great time for a kid. I mean, age at five to nine, I mean, he showed me how to ride horses, how to brand cattle, how to plant. I mean, my grandpa was like God to me. He even gave me a pinto horse, manchado, spotty. And so every summer I look forward to it. And I said, there is nothing that my grandpa cannot do. But then one morning, he was a widower, just the two of us. I wake up and my grandpa is in the kitchen looking through the window to a pasture that was ready for harvesting. And he didn't look happy. Why? Because the bull has led a herd of cows, has broken the fence, and they were having Christmas in July. <laughs> they were destroying everything. And I said, uh oh, it's going to be a long day at the ranch. Because that bull was very clever. If he would have been in Cuba, he could have taught Fidel Castro how to do a revolution. He was a visionary. He knew how to recruit. He looked for weak points. I said, but my grandpa can do anything. So listen carefully. And then my grandpa looks at this six-year-old kid. He say, saddle up. Go and get them. What? <laughs> my grandpa was from that generation that didn't like to be challenged. He said, I told you, saddle up. Go and get them. Me? Yes, you. Did I have faith? No. Did he have faith in me? Yes. And that's a secret. So I saddled up Manchado, and I rode to that encounter with the bull and the herd. And I felt like if you watch a series of sorrow, like Sergeant Garcia, you know, always chasing a sorrow and never finding him. And I tasted sweet and sour Chinese food. Part of me says, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. But the other part says, your grandpa says you can. Your grandpa says you can. You see, it's the faith of my grandpa that led me to be obedient. It took me much longer. I finally chased them out, fixed the fence, and I was galloping back and wondering, will my grandpa show some pride in me? Well, my grandpa was born at the end of the 19th century. Men in those years didn't smile. They didn't come and say, how was school today? Can I help you with your homework? No. They sat at the table, you sat at the table. They got up, you got up. If they talk, you talk back. If you didn't talk, today I have 12 grandkids. I'm just one among 12. But in those days, it was very serious. But I felt, oh my goodness, I have accomplished something. But I knew a secret. When he was happy and proud, there was a glint in his eyes. And I'm galloping back to the ranch. And when I got there, he already hitched a horse to a buggy. He said, hold on. We're going to town, to the cantina, which was a bar. We have been there many times. And I look at him, and he had the glint. He's happy. He's proud of me. He was a man who spoke very few words and always in a low voice. But that day, he almost kicked the door open of the cantina. And he announced to everybody, the usual, for me 
and my partner, my partner, six year old. And then he told everybody what I have done. And because that bull has a missionary mind, was always looking for new fields to go and devour. Everybody knew. And they bought me second drinks. And this is the point I want to make. When you receive this word in the context of the challenge your pastor has given you, the day will come when you will hear God tell his angels, I'm proud of you. You are my partner. But we need to understand the whole issue of faith. Without that, we'll go nowhere. So I want you to read with me. Remember the Tabasco sauce. Without God, we can't. We have no doubt about that. But I'm here for the second half. Without us, he won't do it. So you see, there is a mystery. Why did God need you and me to transform Hawaii? I don't know, but it's like marriage. It's a mystery. Don't try to understand it. Just enjoy it. And so I want to take you to a hero of the faith, Gideon. When we think of Gideon, we think he's the terminator. This guy could do anything. He turned 135,000 enemy soldiers into pepperoni slices. I mean, but actually, I want to bring up to you that Gideon didn't begin as a coward. He began as a hero. He began as a coward. He was afraid. And the devil would use fear to paralyze your faith. But fear and doubts are not wrong. They are part of our growing. And so I want to show you three powerful principles from the life of Gideon. Number one, number one. God has a better opinion of you than the opinion you have of yourself. Receive that. Receive it. I mean, God has a better opinion. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. That means he's your accuser. He's telling you day in and day out, you are not good enough. Don't listen to the devil. The second thing is, God will make your family and your elders, even your pastors, to develop a better opinion of you than what you think is possible. And number three, and this is a cherry in the Coke, God will make your enemies, the devil and his demons, have a better opinion of you than what you think is imagined. Now look at this. He thinks better of you as you respond to that because you have to love yourself in order to be able to love others. He will cause your family, your elders, your, your bosses to have a better opinion of you. And when you do that, the devil will know that you mean business. So let me show you this. Number one, it says in Judges chapter 6 that the enemies of the people of God prevailed against them. Because Midian, the sons of Israel, made themselves dense in the mountains. Why? Because every year, when the harvest was ready, when the cows had given birth to calf, when everything was ready to be enjoyed, they descended and they devoured. And they have such a low opinion of themselves that they built caves in the mountains where they fled to watch the enemies destroy everything they worked for. And let's be very transparent. After this is our story. We get married to be happy, and the devil destroys our marriage. We bring children into our world, we raise them in the fear of God, and they backslid. We launch a new uh, business, a new ministry, and it goes belly up. And all we can do is just watch it. And that's the context for it. But now the Lord sends an angel to Gideon whose mantra is, soldier that flees is good for the next war. This guy is not planning on fighting. He's hiding some seed in the wine cellar. So before he will go to the mountain and watch the enemy destroy everything he worked for, so that when he came back, he would have something to plant for the enemy to destroy it next year. The guy is a coward. But look at the message from God. 
The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. God is, is, is go in this short strength and save your nation. Number one, he was not a warrior. He was a warrior, not a warrior. And he was that mighty. Why will God call him that? Because God has a better opinion of you. Memory is the enemy of faith. Memory is what the devil activates. Oh, you heard Pastor Creighton, but it didn't work, right? It will not work. He uses that. And the question I put before you, whose report would you believe? Would you believe the report of the devil that tells you you will never succeed, you will never be happy, you will never be married, you will never have intimacy, or the word of the Lord that tells you you are a mighty warrior? If you believe the report of the Lord, say amen. amen. It's okay to say amen. It's okay to shout. And then God tells Gideon, who is thinking of saving himself, in this your strength, which is another joke. It sounds like a joke because the guy has zero strength, below zero. Go and save the nation. And this goes back Without God, we can't, but without us, he won't. What do you have in your hands today? Fears, doubts, insecurities? Give them to the Lord. Because what the Lord wanted was to change his perspective. You are thinking, how am I going to survive? And God says, you are going to change your nation. Your pastors have a vision that is inspiring. I believe that's why we connected. Because we share the same vision. We believe that Hawaii shall be transformed. But God will not transform it without you. Receive that. Don't say, I don't understand it. No one understands marriage until you get married. No one understands parenting until you get a kid. But you want it. You go for it. And so that's the first point. So whose report would you believe? Say with me. I am a mighty warrior. Say it with gusto. I am a mighty warrior. Why? Because God says you are a mighty warrior. Tell the one next to you, you are a mighty warrior. Come on, shake them up and tell them you are a mighty warrior. So she says, okay, uh, uh, but how come for 40 years I heard there were miracles and I never saw a miracle? What are those miracles? And probably you have wondered that. Hey, I hear all these stories about revival here. What about here? And God says, I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to tell you to do something. And he tells him, your father is a priest of Baal. You grew up in a home where there are altars to my enemies, to Baal and to Asherah. All over the valley, there were altars to Baal. All his life, Gideon grew up thinking, yeah, God may be God, but every morning I face Baal. And he says, go and tear down that altar. And tear down the altar, the, 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 the idol of uh, Baal, and destroy Asherah. One was made of stones, the other was made of, uh, uh, of wood. And she says, pull down the altar of Baal, which belongs to your father, and cut down the Asherah that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord on top of this stronghold. You see, God wants you to look at everything the devil has used to put you down. And today you will receive the faith to pull it down. And today's mess will be tomorrow's message. Yesterday set back is God set up. And the Bible says that because he was afraid of his father's household and the men in the city to do it by day, he did it by night. I want to push you at ease. Fear, doubts are normal. God is telling you, you're going to change everything. Your family shall be saved. But faith, 99% is obedience. He was afraid, but he did it. We have here Pastor Tony Summers from Vallejo, California. 
I mean, that was a city that was forsaken, abandoned, broken. Today is turn, uh, turning around. Why? Because they took whatever they had, they gave it to the Lord, and the Lord multiplied it. And when you are obedient, the people that you are afraid of begin to think more highly of you. Gideon had a stronghold of inferiority. I am not good enough. So they said, if I do this, my father will kill me. The elders will crucify me. But he did it. He did it. You see, I'm imparting faith to you today, but you have to add words. And when you add words, that's like a poxy. Now you have both of them. So the next morning, she's listening, and what happened? The elders said, who did this thing? And when they searched about and inquired, they said, Gideon, the sound of Joash. Just wait until we tell his dad. And then they go and they tell the dad, bring out your son that he may die, for he has torn down the altar of Baal, and indeed he has cut down the Asherah which was beside it. Now picture Gideon. He said, this is what I was afraid was going to happen. He's listening to that. But the dad says, oh, so will you contend with Baal? Will he deliver him? If he is God, let him contend for himself. Because someone torn down his altar. And now the father changed the name from Gideon to Jerubbaal, which means this is the one that Baal has a problem with. And I say this to you today, the altars of unbelief, of divorce, of lack of money, lack of education, lack of intimacy that maybe you grew up with because four generations back, everybody's in that rut. Those are coming down when you are obedient. Because without God, you can, but he needs you. And so, not only God has a better opinion of him, now his elders get a better opinion of him. And sometimes it's so difficult to tell the people that we have cohabited with, that we live with, that we work with, that things will change. But you go home today and you declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. As for me and my house, we will do better. So break down the altars that empower generational sins and curses in your life. If no one ever went to college in your family, you should go to college. Your kids should go to college. If people were always living, you know, from hand to mouth, you will be head and not tail. It's a stronghold we are dealing with. So Gideon must have felt very proud. I feel good about myself. I got my parents on my side. God says, I'm not done yet. I'm going to make your enemies feel better about you. And look what God tells him. Now, the same night it came about that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp. That's 135,000 soldiers. For I have given it into your hands. Repeat after me. For I have given it into your hands. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. He knows it, but we don't know it. And he says, but if you are afraid to go down, go with Pura, your servant, down to the camp. <laughs> that sounds like another joke. There are 135,000 soldiers ready to turn Gideon into pepperoni slices. His life expectancy facing 135,000 was probably two seconds. If he went with Pura, that will be four seconds. <laughs> Why that? Because that's the power of agreement. If two of you come together, I will be there. And there is this short booklet that I wrote how to be a hero to your children. It's a story of Pura. Very few people even heard the name before. But Pura is the one that empowered Gideon and went with Gideon when Gideon was afraid. And if you want to know what is Ruth and my 
philosophy of life for whatever years I have left here is to go to Gideons who do not believe in themselves and go with them to the enemy's camp and watch them believe that God can do it. And when they go there, they hear two guys talking, and they said, I have a vision of a loaf of, of uh, bread that came rolling into the camp and hit the main pole, and not only brought down the tent, it flipped it up. Now, these are his enemies. And Gideon is there, listening, in fear, but in obedience. And the other guy says, oh, I have the interpretation. That loaf of bread is no one other than Gideon, in whose hands he has delivered us. And I say to you today, God already saved your family. God already saved the workplace. God already did that. The enemy knows it, but you have to know it. I mean, all night long I was battling this principality. It wanted to fight. I said, listen, I know the end game. You're a loser. I'm going to show up. I'm going to preach. Good things are going to happen. And you will be sent back to hell. So meditate in this. The best place for your faith to grow is in the enemy's camp. Ruth wrote a book, two books. One of them is about faith building stories. And in that one, she tells stories of angelic apparitions that came and rescued us three times. Three times she recorded, it was more than that. Every time angels rescue us, we were in the enemy's camp. And that's why I declare to you, you not only have Jesus, you not only have the Holy Spirit, there are angels that camp around you. There are angels, but... We think that angels love praise and worship. I don't believe that. I think they cover their ears when we begin to sing because they can sing much better than us. Cherubims and seraphims, that's a different story. You know what the angels love the most? War. War. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of hosts of angels. And when you take a stand today, when you go to work tomorrow, when you bring the presence of God into a place that has been mean and cruel to you, angels will show up. Somebody say amen to that. But the, the issue here is this. If you want to see what you have never seen, you need to do what you have never done. Otherwise, you will continue to see what you already have seen. And that's why I want to encourage you with this. What we are dealing with are strongholds. I share with Pastor Creighton this morning because I'm here under his covering. And what I perceive in the spirit is that the devil is not holding you back because you are doing something evil. No, I can see it. You're walking with the Lord. As we partook of communion, I could see the presence of the Lord. Your struggle is now, how do I get from bad to good? The struggle you face because you have been chosen as C4 to be the point is between good and best, to go for more. And that is the stronghold that is the most difficult to detect because we are doing so well. Hey, I have been married for 20 years. We love each other. Can you love each other more? We are having intimacy. Can you have more intimacy? You know, I'm, 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 profit, I'm paying my bills. Well, can you become head and not tail? And that is a stronghold I'm coming against today. Because God is choosing you to be head and not tail. What is in a stronghold? In a stronghold, read it with me. One, two, three. It's a mindset impregnated with hopelessness that causes us to accept as unchangeable something that is contrary to the will of God. Things that you read in the Bible or things that I'm preaching on, God has faith in you. You will recover your family. You will change Hawaii. Well, it's there, but I am not hopeful about it. So they are Satan's secret weapons. Say secret weapon. Why? Because you don't know what he's using. I was a commando in the army. I'll tell you, my most powerful weapon was not my weapon. 
was my knowledge of the weapon that the enemy had because that allowed me to prepare for it. So Satan had three weapons. I mean, we gain victory by the blood of the Lamb that was shed once and forever, by the word of our testimony that we declare and you do a great job, but then we have to be willing to fight. We have to get into the fight. Even if I perish, I perish, but I choose what I perish. And Satan has three weapons. One is very active, sin. It's like a bullet. It hits you, and you know that you got hit. Anytime we sin, we know that we are in trouble. Then he has another one, accusation, because he's your accuser. He activates the memory. You go to bed after a miserable day, and you're ready to turn the lights off and wake up tomorrow a different day, and two demons working the night shift show up and say, wait a moment, we need to accuse you. And they accuse of everything you did wrong, you could have done wrong, you might have done wrong, or you will do wrong. And he tortures you. We are familiar with that. But the strongholds are like underwater mines that he places there waiting for the worst possible moment to blow up. So your pastor tells you, we're going to change Hawaii. We are going to be a light to the nation. And you say, yes, yes, yes. And then the devil says, yeah, but what about this issue? What about the other issue? They are secret weapons because he uses them when we are ready for battle. So read with me the scriptures. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of his strongholds. And now this is what we are going to do. Number one, two, three, go with me. We are destroying the speculations. And every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking your thoughts captive. I'm destroying the speculation. I'm declaring the truth of the Lord. You say, brother, I don't have the anointing. Don't worry, I do. I mean, I'm here to take authority. Yes, so I'm going to run through this very, very fast because time is limited. But this booklet, Strongholds, you can read it in 20 minutes. We'll give you all the details of what I'm about to share. It's a stronghold impregnated with hopelessness. You are in church. You hear the teaching. You believe it. You face the problem, and you no longer believe it. That's what happened. Look at the issue of unforgiveness, or sexual immorality, or lack of intimacy in marriage, or children that go the wrong way. Do you know what the will of God is? Absolutely. But you say, but pastor, I already tried and tried and didn't have. That's a stronghold. That's what the devil will activate when your pastor say, let's go for it. You say, wait a moment, you're gonna change what? And you cannot forgive that person? But the word of God is setting you free. Receive it. Receive it. I had the trial lawyer friend, and I said, what is the strategy? Because I would, I would have been a lawyer if I'm not who I am today. I said, what is the strategy when you know that your client is guilty, 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 and you have to get him the best defense? He says, jury selection. In capital cases, if I get one juror, to have a reasonable doubt, I get him a scot free. And she said, and then I go through all the motions, members of the jury, baloney. I'm thinking of that guy or that gal who will vote not guilty. And this is what the devil does. He won't tell you the Bible is a lie. He will not tell you don't come to church. He will not tell you don't pray to God. I mean, those are the jurors he cannot change. He will say, yes, but. And I'm here to say, God will change that. It's a lofty thing. It's a partition. It consists of a lofty thing raising your mind to block the knowledge of God, okay, from his or her own expectations. And what happens when you have a lofty thing? It makes you double-minded. 
And so you are double-minded, according to James. You are unstable in all your ways. You know, how do you call it when you do this uh, arm wrestling? Okay, when you do that, you cannot have a nanosecond of doubt. If you doubt, boom, you lose. And that's what the devil does. But I am here to take authority, to pull down that is stronghold. That's what Paul did. So, number one. They are located in the mind. Why? Because it's a speculation, knowledge, thoughts. What are those? In your mind. Your mind is the most dangerous piece of equipment you carry unless it's renewed by the Holy Spirit. Okay? For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace because the mindset of the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law, and is not able to do that. Number two, and this is even more dangerous. By the way, all these PowerPoints, stop by the book table, just leave a, an email address, and Cindy will send it to you. They are made up of good thoughts. And I submit, Pastor Crankton, with the utmost respect, that this is a challenge you face in C4. You are not doing bad. You are doing good. But there is more. Why do I say that? Peter comes to Jesus and says, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus says, God revealed that to you. I mean, no one got that revelation. Three verses later, he calls Peter, Satan, depart from me. Why? Because Peter yielded to compassion. I don't want you to suffer. Don't die. And that's what happens. Good thoughts get us in trouble. It's not the good thoughts. It's the better thoughts that get us there. Number three, they develop in the shadow of our strength. You don't build a fort in a swamp. You build it on top of a hill. Something strong. You make it stronger. The area where you think you are strong are the areas that the devil has targeted. I see this in counseling all the time. I mean, people blew it sky high with sexual immorality or whatever. And say, why did you do it? You know what, Pastor? I never thought I was going to do it. I was always so strong in this. When you are, think you are strong, you give the devil room to crawl in. I have a million of shortcomings. I need the grace of God every day. But one area that I have been consistently strong is the area of sexual purity. But if you come to my office, you will see that the walls in my office are all glasses. Why? Because if the devil decides to tempt me with that, it will be a different ball game. There are sins that I struggle with that I know when they are coming. When they check at the airport, I don't know they landed. Because I'm used to that. But the devil will crawl in. And that's why you have to know. Look at Abraham. Abraham didn't have kids. Lot didn't have a father. So he said, that's a good idea. I can take this kid with me. But God has told Lot, leave your household and your relatives. Just you alone go there. But he says, come on, Lot needs a father. I need a child. And if you read the story, he got in trouble for that. I mean, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed and have to be reinstated because of a foolish thing. So think for a moment. And number four, they are activated by traumas and detonated by a crisis. Time and again, I have seen people say, I will never forgive. And when you do the counseling, they have the gift of mercy. And people say, I will not give money. And they have the gift of giving. Why? Because they gave without asking God. They rushed to forgive without learning from the incident there. It's like this doctor that was having an affair with his secretary. And he was a believer. And the wife was a believer. She knew something was wrong, but didn't know what was wrong. And she was praying for God to do something. 
and God was dealing with the doctor by causing him to have financial problems. And then the wife, without asking God, talks to her dad, and the dad bails the doctor out of the financial problem. Guess what happened next? He divorced the wife and married the secretary. And thy wife says, I'll never help anyone. Let the Lord speak to you. There are areas where you are supernaturally gifted that you may be holding back because at one point, the devil activated a trauma. Let the Lord bring healing to you. And he will do it today. I can tell you that. Let the Lord pour his oil there. Yes, and could you get if I have known, but you didn't know. But now you do know. Deal with it. And number five, it creates a double mind that results in emotional and spiritual instability. Look at this. This is Paul. This is not the backsliding Christian. For I joyfully concur. The guy is in the penthouse. Look how he says, wretched man that I am. I mean, how can you get so fast from the penthouse to the fourth basement? I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. But I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members, wretched man that I am. See for attention. God is about to do something in your life. God is about to touch you and give you freedom to overcome the things you haven't been able to overcome. We have to move back to the penthouse. And so what is the solution? You will get the details here, but let me tell you. Number one, submit to God through a truth encounter. Don't color coat it. Don't sugar coat it. Well, you know, no, no. Submit to God. It is wrong not to love that person. It is wrong not to have intimacy by marriage. It is wrong to have an addiction to pornography. It is wrong. So need to God. Choose the word of God over the circumstances in order to bring down the lofty thing raised up. You have to pull it down. Otherwise, we come to church or we have our devotion and I'm in room A. Yes, yes, amen, amen. And then I face the reality and room B. Well, let me tell you, is that the right time? Or oh, that verse may not mean that. So I say to you now, right there where you are, online, submit to God. Against you and you alone, I have sinned and that which is evil before your eyes. You are the judge. I am not the judge. Say, yes, I will submit to God. I have been living in less than excellent level. Number two, now that you are protected, resist the devil by choosing to die to the flesh to destroy a speculation. And a speculation is a conclusion based on incomplete information or evidence. The word of God is absolute. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me the power. But I don't do all things. You can do all things. You prophesy over dry bones. You declare until the dry bones begin to make noise. And you keep prophesying until they join together. And you keep prophesying. Why? Why not? Our brother who introduced me read, your warfare is with the devil. He takes no prisoner. Resist him. Number three, draw near to God to be able to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Galatians 2.20 presents the only way we can draw near to God, through the power of the resurrection of Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It happened. It's done. What I now live, I live it by faith in the Son of God. Number four, deal with both the outward manifestation and the root cause. It says, cleanse your hands by ceasing to sin, but purify your heart. Can you see my hands, yes or no? Can you see my heart? No. That's the problem. 
we deal incompletely because we stop doing what people can see that we are doing wrong rather than let the word of God and the Holy Spirit get into our heart. I mean, when I do, when we do marital counseling and people come because they blew it through adultery or what have you, but I'm not doing it anymore. Let's get to the root cause of that. Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord and do the 40-day treatment. And this is the assignment I'm going to suggest that you do. Perseverance is the key. The 40-day treatment is basically identifying the problem, finding the Bible verse that tells you what the will of God is, and for 40 days, breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime, you give testimony to the devil. Why? Because he has been giving testimony to you. It will never happen. It will never change. He said, it is written, blah, blah, blah. If he who finds a wife finds a good thing, and you declare that, and you declare that, okay? And stop your biblical arsenal, declare war, draft Bible statements, say it is written, and persevere, persevere. I learned this, and I tell the story in detail in the book that none should perish. There was a pastor in San Francisco who was having a problem with a stronghold. He didn't know it was a stronghold until he read my book. But one day he believed, and the next day he was a Jew, and he believed it. So out of desperation, he went to Carmel, which is a lovely uh, coastal town. And he was walking on the beach, and there was a lovely mist. And all of a sudden, he was surrounded by flies. And that was unusual because we don't have flies in California, much less by the ocean because the salinity in the air is that welcoming them. So being a sensitive man, he said, God, are you telling me something? Yes. Go to the public library and check every book on flies. So he went there, checked every book, and there he learned that during the fruit fly epidemic, where there were flies that were destroying our harvest, the government sprayed for 40 days non-stop. Why? Because the lifespan of a larva that later on becomes a fly is 40 days. By spraying 40 days, you kill current and future flies. So he got that. Now God says, write down the names of the devil, the devil, the adversary, Satan, Belzebub. Who was Belzebub? Who is Belzebub? the prince of the flies. And you have to do warfare. And now that he got the theory, God put him to the test because he needed to bring down a wall on the church property. And he looked for the best demolition company. And he hired them. And on the appointed day, rather than very sophisticated equipment, a Mexican guy shows up with a sledgehammer. And he's disappointed. You're going to bring down the wall? Yes, just watch me. And the guy hits the wall one time, two times, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. Nothing happens, but he persevered. On the 36th blow, a hairline crack appeared. On the 37th, a spider web pattern of crack. On the 38th, boom, broke through. When you engage the devil on the 40-day treatment, I'm telling you now, the first week is a trip to hell. He will throw everything at you. That person you are trying to love is going to be meaner than ever. But it's the devil that doesn't want you to fight. You persevere, and then he goes into radio silence because he wants you to believe it's done. It's done, done. Persevere. And then the last few days, he will come back like a vengeance. But he shall be overcome. I have seen that in my own walk with the Lord. We have seen that with Ruth. I have seen that with the people I lead, people that never thought I could do what I'm doing because they have a stronghold. The testimonies we highlighted at the conference, no one was there on day one. But they got there. 
So in conclusion, okay, the choice is between being a POW or a Marine. And you're accepted for a more humane, cleaner POW camp, waiting for your commander in chief to come and rescue you, or are you going to declare war on the devil? So let the Lord speak to you. When I think about C4, and I have only met your pastor and then the staff just less than six months ago, but I can see in the spirit the destiny for this movement. Yesterday we had a seminar in Chinatown and the collaboration between New Life Church and C4 is nothing short of a miracle. I mean, to have a church turn over their property and to have another church come and say, we're going to populate and serve you and honor you. Why, why not? But it's not just Pastor Creighton or Pastor King. It's not Francis. It's not that. It's you. You, Grandma. You, young people. You are the one that God is looking for today. So if the Lord is speaking to you, if you realize, yes, I can move up. I should move up. I will submit to God. I will resist the devil. I will engage him in a 40-day treatment. I can tell you with absolute certainty, in 40 days, you have no idea how good it's going to be. Why? Why not? So, Father, I pray that now you pour down your Holy Spirit on your faithful servant. I pray, Lord, for those that have been struggling with doubts and unbelief. I pray for those that struggle with fear. And I take captive those thoughts. I bind them. I break every ancestral curse. I declare you are a mighty warrior. You are a mighty woman of God. You are a mighty man of God. Believe God. Don't believe the devil. In Jesus' name, I set you free. And if you would like now an anointing for implementation, what you receive this morning is by faith. Faith comes by hearing what? The word of God. But faith without works is dead. So now you need the anointing for implementation. If you want that anointed, and I'll tell you, you need it. Get up where you are and say, yes, I need it. I want to pray. I want to impart that anointing on you. That at this moment, the breath of God will come upon you. You are like Adam before God breathed on him. You are dead matter, but he will blow into your soul, and you will receive something. So lift up both hands to the Lord. And say with me, Father God, breathe upon me. I need your aloha. I need your anointing. I ask for it. And by faith I receive it. In Jesus' name. And now take a deep breath. One, two, three. Hold it. And now breathe out. Father, I declare, I declare the C4 is chosen to lead the way, and they will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. I encourage you, get the booklet, and when you go home, do a prophetic act. Write down what is a stronghold, pick up the Bible verse, and declare war on the devil. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Thank you, Pastor Dean. Hey, can you help me to thank um, Dr. Ed one more time? Amen. Hey, listen, before we release you from service this morning, I want to share one more thing. That there's a lot of, um, he has a, a, there's a book table right outside in the front. And I want to encourage you to go check out um, some of these books. Um, that little pamphlet, Strongholds. I'll tell you that 
I flew up in October all the way to California and sat in this session that Dr. Ed's daughter and his son-in-law taught. And it was probably one of the most powerful things that I've experienced um, all in 2023. And that book is very life-changing. And so I want to just encourage you. Also, there's a book called Ecclesia out there. That is also something that is life-changing uh, for me, for Creighton, and for a lot of our staff. want to just encourage you to go check it out. I know that you just got fire-hosed with so much great information, and it's going to take a couple of times, I, I promise you, like it's going to take a couple of times watching through this, sitting with the Lord as he kind of just um, massages your heart. And so you can also go back online in our YouTube channel, C4 Hawaii, to be able to check this message out again. Go ahead and watch it again. You can also, um, again, sign up. There's a little um, sheet out there with Cindy. She's amazing. Just give her your email, and she's going to send over the PowerPoint if you want it. Um, give her 24 hours, or no, maybe two days to be able to do that. And she's amazing. She's going to get it to you ASAP. But family, I just want to encourage you. One thing the Lord showed me this morning is that last year we talked about this. We were in a season for the last three years of abiding in the Lord, just having our identity secure in Christ. And there's been seeds that have been planted of his promise of dreams inside of our hearts. And this year, we talked about this being a year of activation, where we would begin to discover the uniqueness of who God created us as individuals, but how amazing it is when we come together as the body of Christ, because it's not a individual faith it's a personal faith in a family context okay and so in this same space what the lord is showing me is just that there are some people that have gone already and they're, they're the seed that's planted has germinated and their experience breakthrough the plant is breaking through the dirt and for some of us it's like man is there even a seed in there still yet? Like, I've been watering this thing. I've been praying. I've been waiting. And can we be faithful? I see that the Lord is doing something in those seeds right now that it's beginning to grow. And that this year would be a year of breakthrough. That we're going to see dreams and promises come to fruition. That we're going to experience the Lord's faithfulness in a totally different way than we've ever seen before. If you agree with that, would you say amen? Amen. Okay, let me bless you before we go. Our ministry team, I'm going to invite our ministry team up here. So if you need prayer, please come up that we can be able to lay hands with you. But would you lift up your hands to be able to receive? If you're saying there's something inside of me, God, break through this morning, break through this year. Open up your hands. Father, we just receive what you have for us. Holy Spirit, we're asking that you would come and that you would encounter us right now, Lord. We've been hearing about power encounters, God. We've been hearing testimonies, God. Do it in our lives that we would also be a testimony unto you, Jesus. We're asking for breakthrough in this time, God. No matter the stronghold, no matter the season, Father, we're asking that your power, your victory would come into our mind, flow into our hearts, that we would walk out in agreement, not according to my will, but your will be done here in my life, here in this community, here in our islands and across the world. Let heaven come to earth in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, would you say amen? Amen. amen. Hey, bless you. Have a great week. In Jesus' name. Aloha, family. This concludes our online worship experience. If this was your first time with us, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel, C4 Church Hawaii. And make sure your notifications are on so you don't miss a thing. And if we're already family, we're glad that you could join us today. We want to let you know we're here for you and we would love to pray for you. In fact, let me pray for you right now. Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name, God. Would you just release more of your Holy Spirit, Father? Give more wisdom, more revelation into every marriage, God, into every single person, every child, every family, every household right now, God. We release your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>